Hello everyone, Cilantro here. Welcome to my tutorial on how to play Symmetra. I dislike long intros, so let's just get to it. First off, her gun. It has two forms. It has the noodle form, which is done by holding left click. And it has the meatball form by holding right click. Bam. The noodle form actually charges up the longer you have it on a target and will retain its charge for a few seconds after the target is lost or if you have to reload. As you can see as well, on the gun itself, there's a little, I don't know what you want to call it, a dial that has some little marks in it. And that indicates how far of a charge you have. The longer you stay tracked on a charge, the more it will charge up. One of the nice things about this form of the gun is that it actually will retain its charge through reloads, through target changes, through kills, through anything. It's all based on time. And as long as you can reattach the noodle to something in between uh, shots, it will actually uh, keep the charge. One other thing, you actually have a pretty wide ammo pool, 100 shots essentially, which is quite a long time. Uh, although it does actually use ammo even if you're not hitting anything, so just be wary of that. You can see I'm able to hold the button down for quite some time uh, without having to reload. The slow moving projectile that's charged up by right click actually does a good amount of damage as well as piercing targets. As you can see, it hit both of those bots. It's good for area denial. Uh, it will eat your ammo up a lot more quickly than the left click will. So be, care be careful about that. Her turrets are very powerful, very useful for zone control. I would highly recommend against stacking them all up in the same place as they are incredibly fragile, having only one hit point. But you can put them anywhere you can reach. You can put them on walls, on any of these little doodads, the floor, the ceiling, um, anywhere where you find them to be useful. We'll go over some places specifically later in the video. But in general, uh, you want to make sure that you're using these as much as you can. You can have six up total and uh, only have charges to use three at first. And as you can see, there's now a cooldown for the turrets. And as that cooldown refreshes, you'll have access to using them more and more often. Lastly, there is her teleporter. Uh, you build your teleport charge by just, first of all, being in the match. But secondly, by doing more damage with your turrets or with your gun you'll build your teleporter very quickly. This is the most important ability that Symmetra has. She has the ability to shield her allies as well. If you get close enough, you can give them a 25 hit point shield, as you can see, as my turrets are killing everything. Um, but the teleporter is the most important ability. Also note that when you use it, the teleporter exit will face away from you, essentially. So when I place this, anybody who comes through the teleporter will come out facing that way. Uh, it's a little unintuitive, but that's the way it works. As you can see, there I am. The teleporter has six charges, as indicated by the d the number on the dial to the right of the percentage sign. Uh, now it has five, as I've used it, and four, and so on. When you have your teleporter placed, it's one of the best things you can do to support your team. It's uh, the reason that she's classified as a support, in my opinion. Um, if there is one charge left in the teleport, and you and another person are spawning, consider carefully whether you should let them take the last teleporter charge or yourself. It's not a question I can answer for you, but if you feel like you can contribute more by getting back to the battle more quickly, then so be it. For example, if you have, say, a tracer on your team who has the ability to dash through the map very quickly, or a soldier or some other character with high mobility, consider taking the teleporter yourself to reestablish your own turrets, do some damage, and get the ultimate charge back up. It's, uh, again, not a question I can answer for you, but something just to keep in mind. Whether you intend on playing Symmetra or are curious about how to play against Symmetra, one thing you cannot do is underestimate her damage output. Double. It can actually be quite high. As of the current version, 1.0.4.2, her noodle gun, when it's fully charged, does 120 DPS, making it one of the highest damaging weapons in the game. It also has incredibly good tracking, although it does have very short range. Symmetra excels in area oh, denial really and team support outside of the healing that she probably should have or could have. One of the best things you can do at the beginning of a match, especially on defense, is to make sure you're placing your turrets very aggressively. As you're heading towards the very entrance of the map, I would advise placing one turret somewhere in the Fences combat area in just to get your ability on cooldown. This will allow you to get finally all the way to the entrance of the enemy Attack team. They're going to know your Symmetra. Defense. That's totally fine. It's not a big deal. Most people Third tend to underestimate defense. her anyway. I would place three turrets... Uh, assuming the cooldown is back up around the main entrance or two around the main entrance one around the side entrance These turrets are not going to last. They're not meant to do a lot of damage They're there to annoy the initial push distract them from pushing out 
and more importantly, build you some ultimate. I've gotten anywhere from 10 to 40% of the first teleporter, which can be the most crucial one before anything like that. As you can see, by doing this method, I now have six, tu six turrets up right as soon as the match is starting. I will shape order from gates. Yeah, you will. A comprehensive list of all the good places to put turrets is a little bit outside of the scope of this video, but I will give you a few hints on places to place them. For one, uh, obviously areas where they're going to get a lot of attention, like for example side places, uh, guarding against flanking is always very useful, especially if you're very communicative with your team. Making sure that you po point out to your teammates where people are coming from because you see your turrets firing can be very useful. I'd also recommend putting two or three at a very hot spot, especially a narrow hallway or a side room where it's likely to be uh, used or attacked on occasion. For example, in this map, putting three down here may seem like a little bit of a waste, especially since there is a health pack, but you're guaranteed to get a lot of traffic here. And your turrets do damage, they do harass the enemy, but the most important thing that they do is they build your ultimate and they build it very quickly. So making sure that they're going to be used and abused is the most important thing you can do. That being said, I would like to I would like to advise you to keep at least one of them, maybe two around the actual important points or combat area as they do supplemental DPS and will often be completely ignored by anyone who's attacking. So obviously the most important thing you can do with Symmetra is keeping your turrets up, staying alive especially, especially if you do not have your teleporter up, and of course, getting your teleporter up. But she excels in a few other ways that I think a lot of people underestimate. For one, she's very good at just spamming an area with her attack. This area in particular in Hollywood is a very good avenue. A lot of attackers will come this way, and just periodically shooting her projectile down this little hallway can dissuade a lot of people from uh, making an attempt in that direction, or at least give you the timing to understand when it's likely that you're going to be attacking. One thing I would like to note, if you are too consistent about this, it'll become too predictable and people can do that, so I would highly recommend against not only using your full ammunition bar, make sure you keep as much ammo as you can, but also don't just sit here and continually shoot. Make sure you're looking around, make sure you're looking for other avenues of attack, and be ready to defend anyone that you can. Another thing Symmetra is incredibly good at is very close quarters combat. I'm going to go over some specifics about fighting each of the classes and fighting with each of the classes. But long story short, she's one of the most dangerous people at incredibly short range, but beyond that, kind of useless. So you want to find a corner to hide around, ambush people as best you can, or alternatively, find a tank, particularly a Reinhardt or maybe even a Zarya, that you can stay nearby. Both of those heroes uh, have a little bit of trouble at close, co close quarters. Reinhardt definitely has his hammer that he can use, but he obviously ideally like to keep his shield up. So if you can keep any close range attackers off of them while they are protecting you, it can be quite the formidable uh, duo. As a general note, Symmetra definitely is a very defensive hero. I would highly recommend selecting her largely in defensive maps, never as an attacker on a payload map though there may be some exceptions. However, in contested point maps like Elios, I actually think she's quite powerful in some of those situations, all depending on your team composition, the enemy team composition, and just your general ability with her. Um, don't underestimate her ability to zone control, to truly support her teammates. There have been a number of games where I've actually done quite well as the only support. If you have a team that has a lot of self-sustaining heroes like Rohog or supplemental heals like with Soldier 76, you can certainly be the only backbone support. If you have a very survivable t team, one that stays alive, the teleporter is all the healing you need. If you do decide to play the area denial game, I would highly recommend keeping at least one turret near you at all times, just as supplemental damage and slowing. The slowing effect isn't great, but it is there, and it certainly is noticeable, especially with two or maybe even three turrets on you. Of course, you always are putting yourself at risk of splash damage, destroying both you and your turrets, so it's a trade-off. However, if you're in the, in the middle of a fight with somebody, especially a very mobile hero like a Tracer or a Genji, if they're trying to run circles around you, don't hesitate to just start spamming turrets right next to where you are as you're trying to get around a corner or find some defense. Their momentary choice to either attack you or your turret could be their downfall. Without any further delay, I'm going to very quickly go over my thoughts on each of the current heroes in the game, how they work well with Symmetra, if they work well with Symmetra, and how she can combat them if they're the, on the opponent's team. You can click on each of the character portraits right now to get to each section. Bam! Genji, a very mobile and adept flanker, can be very dangerous to deal with against any hero. Symmetra has a few options. 
She definitely does a lot of damage, and Genji has a very small health pool. Staying extremely close can certainly be one way to deal with it, although a good Genji with some solid aim can definitely take you down as well. Be as fast and mobile as possible. You're not going to outmaneuver them, but you can hopefully get around the corner and pull some tricks. The turrets here are going to be your best friend, not only partially slowing him, but also pointing out if he's trying to approach you on a flank. There really aren't any particular synergies between Symmetra and Genji. If you're playing on the same team, obviously your shield will help support his relatively flimsy health pool, but otherwise he doesn't really offer anything to you directly. Your turrets go a long way against the McCree to prevent him from flanking you. Obviously the flashbang is very dangerous as it is with most heroes. However, without the flashbang, only his roll is going to be able to save him. If you can get close enough, there's very little chance that he's going to be able to take you out. Like Genji, a McCree on your team doesn't necessarily offer anything. He's kind of a generic attacker in that aspect. However, just like with Genji, your extra HP pool that you can offer him will increase his survivability. Farah is certainly one of the most difficult heroes to deal with. You have so many splash sources of damage that can completely destroy all of your turrets. You have basically no way to hit her if she's anywhere in the air. And you're certainly going to be relying on teammates to deal with her. One of the least likely heroes you're going to have a good matchup with in any circumstance. On the other hand, a Farah on your team can be quite a good boon. Obviously, being able to support her health pool is useful. Any hero that has a relatively small health pool is going to benefit greatly from that. But furthermore, she can kind of use her own area control abilities to make good synergy with yours, softening up any targets before they get into your turret fields, and otherwise just disrupting somebody who's about to attack you. So, certainly some options there. Reaper can be a little annoying to fight on the enemy team, as he does do a lot of damage very close, as you do as well. However, because his range is effectively just about as short as yours, it's a little bit better of a matchup than you might think. He does have an edge on the health pool, so you have to be careful about that, but it's highly dependent on how much you can get in close without him realizing that you're there. Really, whoever ambushes the other one is probably going to be the victor in that fight. Do note that you will find yourself, especially against a lot of these weaker heroes, killing them very quickly, especially if you're already charged. So all it takes is a few, few quick moments at close range, and you'll be able to get a lot of kills. Considering that Reapers have the ability to heal themselves, your extra little pool of HP isn't going to make a huge difference. They also have a slightly wider health pool than a number of the heroes, as I believe they have 250. So something to be uh, aware of, that there's not a whole lot of synergy between you directly and a Reaper. But certainly no reason not to have one on your team. Soldier is very nasty to fight against. Obviously, they have the ability to heal themselves and can be very difficult to get in close range with. However, if you do manage to get close, it's very difficult for them to hit you. A quick blast of the rockets at your feet may be their only salvation. So just keep in mind with a lot of these heroes, just get close as best you can if you want to get in there and fight. Um, that's the best way to do it. One of the best things about having a soldier on your team as Symmetra is he can actually take over a healing role as a support. And obviously he's not able to completely satisfy that. But Soldier, alongside some other heroes that are very self-sufficient, heroes like Bastion, Roadhog, maybe even Zarya, can really strengthen a team if, they're, if you're going to be the only support. One other thing that's really nice about Soldier is that he sort of provides a natural counter to some of the heroes that counter you. For example, Farah is incredibly na nasty against you, as is, to a certain extent, Junkrat. And Soldier does pretty well in both of those matchups. An enemy Tracer can be a, a nightmare for a Symmetra. Obviously, her extreme mobility is very difficult to deal with, as you have almost none as Symmetra. Um, you will kill her very quickly if she gets close, surprisingly, uh, even to the point where they may not even realize that they're going to die in a split second, especially if your weapon is charged. Symmetra's weapon does about 120 DPS at max charge, and I think Tracer only has 150 hit points. So you can kill her in almost just over a second if you already have uh, maximum charge. Even without it, you're still looking at only a few seconds of damage to be able to take her out, barring that she doesn't rewind it. Um, just watch out for her extra maneuverability, try to ambush her around the corner as best you can. Your turrets will definitely do well against her, but the fact that she kind of likes to stay just outside of your range to be able to shoot ideally is going to make it a very difficult matchup. Really, for the most part, all the attacking heroes can be incredibly dangerous against you as a Symmetra. You have a lot to offer a Tracer on your team. For one, the uh, extra 25 hit points that you give for a hero that otherwise uh, can't really heal itself very much uh, can certainly be a great boon. Widening that tiny health pool will give a lot of survivability to her. In addition, 
if you are playing on certain maps, she may not need to use her your teleporter as much because she is so mobile. She can get right back to the fight very quickly, leaving your teleporter up for you or other slower teammates that you have to use it if the tracer is conscious of this fact. Considering that Symmetra and Bastion are both heroes that are generally only picked on defense or probably should only be picked on defense, it's not likely you're going to run into enemy Bastion. If you do, obviously, he will tear you to shreds in a very short amount of time. However, if you can manage to get the drop at extremely close range, you are incredibly deadly, and even a Bastion uh, will fall very quickly to your danger noodle. As Bastion has almost no maneuverability on his own, especially when he's in turret form, your own turrets can certainly help protect against flankers and other things, so making sure that you're paying attention to the map, calling out potential flankers, can really help protect a Bastion. The little bit of HP that you can give him is largely inconsequential, but certainly there, considering he can heal himself. An enemy Hanzo isn't particularly dangerous against you. Obviously, you are vulnerable to sniper fire in general, but if you try to approach one, they're going to be hard-pressed to really do a lot to you if you're being very maneuverable. Once you actually get on top of a Hanzo, it's pretty much impossible for him to get, uh, get away from you, so it should be a very quick and easy kill. Be wary of his ability to scout around the area, and uh, as you do rely largely on ambushes against enemy heroes, you have to keep in mind that if you are spotted, it's going to make it a lot harder to do that. So if you see the arrow that uh, that sh lights up the targets, make sure you take cover and wait until the effect wears off. On your own team, Hanzo is another one of those heroes that has a relatively shallow health pool and can be greatly benefited by that extra little bit of regenerating health. As a lot of the damage that a Hanzo is going to take, aside from what will straight out kill him, will be tiny little chips of damage as he peeks out to take his shots. So having that extra 25 little bit of health that will regenerate very quickly can actually greatly extend a Hanzo's life. Their extra maneuverability makes it likely that they won't necessarily need to use your teleporter. Uh, in addition to the fact that most snipers do tend to play fairly defensively and hide in places that other people can't get to. So overall, some indirect but good synergy with Hanzo. Your effectiveness against the Junkrat is largely going to depend on if they have their cooldowns. The remote mine and the trap are obviously incredibly deadly to anyone who's trying to get very close. However, if those abilities have been used recently, you have a pretty good shot of being able to take a Junkrat out before he can really do anything. Be aware, of course, that his explosives are very good against your turrets, and there's a good reason to keep all of your turrets spread out as best you can, even in a short, short and small area, while also putting them on different surfaces, some on the floor, some on the wall, some on the ceiling, to make sure that he can't take out all of your things with just simple projectile spam. On a defensive map, Junkrat and Symmetra have some very similar roles. Both of them are very good at area denial and watching flanks. With Junkrat's trap and his remote mine, he can control space in a lot of ways, as in addition to just sort of spamming attacks in a certain area, something that Symmetra is very good at. Having two people on the same job can feel redundant at times, but if you are able to communicate where attackers are coming from very effectively, this pair can work very well. Uh, a trapped foe that's completely stationary is a sitting duck for your noodle gun or even your charged right click. So definitely some very good synergies here. I don't think I really need to say this, but Mei is one of the most annoying heroes to fight against. She's very good at very close range, just like Symmetra is, and she will beat you in a damage race almost every single time. So be very careful about being super close. One of the interesting things about going against a Mei and a few other heroes is that your attack, the Danger Noodle, will actually charge up on their walls or bubbles or all that sort of thing. And because, it, because your weapon has such a wide ammo pool, I would highly recommend doing this if you can remain safe. Having a fully charged weapon and charging into combat, you will get a lot of kills very quickly doing that. So that's one of the things that's actually not super bad about fighting against a Mei. Mei's health pool and her ability to heal herself makes your shield a little bit inconsequential, but as always, still at least somewhat useful. One of the things to keep in mind with Mei is, just like with Junkrat and a lot of the other defensive heroes, it's about controlling space. And as her walls are very good at walling people in, if you can wall someone in with your turrets, you're going to get a lot of points for your ultimate. You're going to do a lot of damage. So uh, coordination with a lot of the defense heroes, Mei in particular, can be incredibly powerful. Like with Bastion, running into an enemy Torbjorn is fairly unlikely unless you're on a control point map like Elios. 
Obviously, his turret is incredibly dangerous to you as you have very little maneuverability. However, your right click can do a lot of damage to it and take his turret down very quickly at extreme range. So if you can find out where it is, it's certainly uh, quite possible to do that. At close range, obviously, with, with Molten Core, Torbjorn is incredibly dangerous. But without it, he's going to have to rely on trying to hit you with his Shotgun Blast, which can be a little dubious. So if you can get close, like with a lot of the heroes, you're in good shape. Otherwise, it may be a little dangerous for you. Torbjorn is one of Symmetra's best friends. The extra 75 armor that he has to offer you is incredibly powerful. Any hero with a shield's uh, lifespan is going to be greatly expanded with that extra 75 armor just because of the mechanics and how they work. So if you can use that, I would suggest playing a little bit more aggressively than you would otherwise. Obviously, don't throw yourself into the middle of the fight, but you can take a lot more punishment, not just because you have the 75 extra health, but because that extra armor, the mechanics of armor, will just make you so much tougher. Obviously, again, Area Denial is the name of the game for a lot of these defensive heroes, so pairing that up nicely, using your turrets to guard the flanks of likely attackers uh, that a Torbjorn will, will face uh, can be incredibly powerful. An enemy Widowmaker is another one of those sort of all-or-nothing matchups. If you can get the drop on her, she's probably dead. It's very unlikely she'll be able to uh, actually kill you. And a lot of Widowmakers will underestimate the damage that a Symmetra can do at close range. And rather than trying to retreat, will try to gun you down and will usually result in their downfall. Obviously, a sniper rifle is incredibly dangerous against you. If you're facing an enemy Widowmaker, I would highly recommend against putting turrets out in the open. Uh, against some heroes, it can be quite possible to do that and have it work well but they can very very easily be picked off by a Widowmaker so just be wary, wary of that. Like with Hanzo a relatively shadow, shallow health pool and no ability to self heal makes Widowmaker a good target for your extra health and similar to how Soldier works Widow is kind of a natural counter to some of the things that naturally counter you so having a Widowmaker on your team as long as they're doing their job right is actually quite useful for a Symmetra. Deva's damage output isn't that great, and her anti-projectile field does almost nothing against you. It's very likely if you see a D.Va, you're going to want to get in there and just start using your noodle to take her out. And it's something that you can definitely do. If they get caught with their anti-projectile field, you've pretty much guaranteed a kill. There's no way they're going to kill you before you can get your weapon charged up and completely deal with them. Obviously, the uh, her ultimate can be used to break up any entrenched position. One of the reasons that you should definitely make sure that your turrets are spread out as far as possible and are using to guard flanks more than the actual defensive points. Diva, along with a lot of the other tank type heroes, can be really good to pair up directly with. Just follow them around, do whatever they do, and directly assist them with kills and all that sort of thing. A lot of the tank heroes can be very vulnerable to close range fighting where they can't really get a target off of them, and that's exactly where you excel as a Symmetra, being extremely close range. As long as you're coordinating with them well, you'll have a lot of success. Reinhardt is one of the heroes that I'm almost always excited to see on the enemy team if I'm playing as Symmetra. You can get a lot of charge for her ultimate by just spam right-clicking at a, at a Reinhardt. And if you are playing as a Reinhardt, do not let the projectile hit you. It will go right through your shields, do a ton of damage, and you'll give the Symmetra 15-20% to 20 charge on their ultimate every time that you're hit. Um, if you are going as a Reinhardt and you're playing on a defensive map, which you probably should be, I would recommend trying to put some turrets everywhere here and there as a turret that's being uh, that's attacking Reinhardt will do just enough damage and annoy them just enough to make them drop their shield for a moment to turn around and actually swing their hammer at them if they're not being guarded by anyone else and that can be a good time for your team to swoop in and start doing some damage or even yourself. Uh, like the shields that Winston provides and the ice wall that May provides, uh, even if you're attacking Reinhardt's actual shield, you will charge your noodle up to do more damage, and I would definitely recommend getting as close as you can to a Reinhardt to do that. If they do start swinging their hammer, it's time for you to get out. They will kill you before you kill them unless you've already weakened them down, so just be careful of that. And just like if there's one on the enemy team, I'm always happy to see a Reinhardt on my own team. 
his huge shield is a natural supplement to your own damage. If you are in any risk, run towards your Reinhardt. Guard his flank as best you can. He will protect you, and you will protect him very well. Reinhardt is very vulnerable to flankers, people trying to jump through and around his shield, and that is exactly where Symmetra is going to really shine. A lot of people will completely ignore you going for the man with the big shield, and that's where you can start charging your damage up and just annihilating anyone who dares to assault you. Obviously, for a tank hero, he has a very wide health pool. The 25 extra HP you can give him is not really that useful but being fairly slow uh, with just the charge to be able to move her around your teleporter is going to be incredibly useful on any team that's got a lot of tanks an enemy roadhog is almost an all-or-nothing matchup if they have their stun up and they're good with it you're probably dead if not there's a good chance you'll be able to pour on some serious damage if they go a whole hog, you're going to be in a really bad spot as you have a very flimsy health pool and very little to do once you're being knocked back, but that's really the same case for just about every hero. So barring the alt and barring some incredibly good accuracy with his uh, hook, you're actually pretty good against a road hog. They all also aren't particularly dangerous against your turrets. Obviously, they have a lot of hit points, so your turrets aren't dangerous against them, but as it is with a lot of heroes, Roadhog is a good way to charge up your alt. He's very slow, and your slow uh, alternate click projectiles can do a lot of damage to him in certain tight hallways and allow you to build up your ultimate quite quickly. Roadhog is a very interesting case when he's on your own team, as while he is a tank, he excels more as a flanker and an area control, so you would kind of pair him like a defense. I would highly recommend leaving some turrets around where the Roadhog is hanging around to help guard him to make sure that he knows where the flankers are, as some of the flankers that will be attacking against the Roadhog can prove to be quite dangerous for him, so giving him a little bit of a heads up that people are around is a good idea. Your extra HP boost is nearly useless as Roadhog has incredible self-healing ability and the largest health pool in the game. Uh, but otherwise, just like with all the other tank heroes, sticking around a Roadhog can be a good idea as he can be a little vulnerable in extremely close range, and he has a very big body that you can hide behind. Like a few other heroes, an enemy Winston's shield can be a great asset to you as you can use it to charge up your noodle. Um, he himself is incredibly dangerous against you. His attack will very quickly destroy all of your turrets, probably the most dangerous against a entrenched turret uh, configuration. So if you are playing against the Winston, I would highly recommend spreading your turrets out even further. Rather than loading three up into one area and one up into three different areas, I would recommend splitting into like a 2-2-1-1 two, two, one, one configuration or even just dotting them everywhere and using them to scout out where exactly everyone is going. If you can manage to get your weapon charged, you can certainly do a lot of damage against Winston, but as his weapon works very similarly to yours, is in that he just basically needs to be very vaguely looking in your direction, he will definitely kill you before you will kill him. With a little bit of support, it can work out a little bit better, but Winston is one of the heroes that I definitely do not like seeing when I'm playing as Symmetra. Winston's job as a teammate is going to be to get in there and disrupt the enemy team. He's very mobile for a tank, as he can leap around the battlefield, your shield does almost nothing for him, and because he's so mobile, it's not likely he's going to be just standing around waiting for people to come to him, so not a lot of direct synergies here. An enemy Zarya is very interesting. It really depends on the timing for their shield. You're presented with a choice anytime she actually activates your shield on somebody. If you continue to fire, you can continue to build up your weapon or retain the charge of it, making sure that you will do a lot more damage once that threat has passed. In addition, Zarya's attacks are not very good at very close range. So even if she does use her shield, if you're feeling confident, you can just continue to fire using your wide ammo pool to make sure that that beam stays fully charged and lock onto her so that once, the, once it is faded, you will kill her very quickly. Zarya's health pool is 400, you will kill her in just over three seconds of full charge, and there's not a whole lot she can do about you if you are jumping around. She has no maneuverability. She has no other things. So that being said, do be very, very afraid of attacking someone with your full charge if Zarya is shielding them, because you will certainly give her 50 of her own charge, and she will do a lot of damage to the rest of your team. It's one of those fights where if you're by yourself against her, I would recommend being very aggressive. If you're with somebody else or if she's with somebody else, I would recommend being very cautious. Also note that using your charge shots, the very slow moving charge shots when there's an enemy Zarya can be incredibly dangerous because she can 
just jump into them or have an ally jump into them with her shield up, completely negate your attack, and also give herself 50 charge. So a very dangerous matchup and certainly makes you pay a lot more attention and think a lot more about what you're doing when she's on the enemy team. Flip side of that is that Zarya on your own team is one of your best allies. Not only can she protect you with her own bubble, you can give her a slightly wider health pool, but you are a very natural guard for her position. Often when I play as Zarya, she's one of my favorite heroes. I'm looking for someone to just partner up with and constantly be around. A lot of times if I have nobody around, I'll just sort of throw my shield on somebody randomly. But if I have a Symmetra or another hero who's playing very closely with me that can use that extra little bit of protection, it can be an incredible duo. And you very naturally help deal with one of her biggest issues, which is being flanked or surrounded and very close range. And as with a lot of situations, for whatever reason, people like going for the tank, like attacking the tank and not the frail person next to the tank. So you can definitely pair up very naturally with Zarya, a great addition to any team and certainly one with the Symmetra on it. An enemy Lucio is not particularly dangerous to you, although his speed boost will make it very easy for him to get away if he remembers to use it in addition to his pushback. If you do manage to get close on a Lucio, especially one that's not paying attention to you, you will kill them very quickly. The extra HP healing that he gives to your to the rest of your of his allies will make it very hard for your turrets to really do anything against them, although you will of course build ultimate while you, while they're being shot. But overall not a hero I necessarily fear, but it will make your job a little bit harder if he's on the enemy team. Symmetra pairs very well with Lucio, as with the group healing that, you, that he has and the extra little bit of HP pool that you give to every hero will make them quite a bit more survivable. Uh, his extra healing just in general will make it so that if you do choose to play sort of more of a roaming option as a defense, checking out different places and even playing slightly more aggressively uh, can be a really nice pairing. Mercy is obviously one of the highest value targets that you can take out. I would recommend going against them any time that you can. She has very little she can do against you, especially if she's by herself in any way, or even if she's hugging near, uh, near a tank or another ally. If you do see her paired with somebody, I would definitely go after her as quickly as you can. Generally a good piece of advice, but particularly for Symmetra. Um, you do have the option of charging up your attack against somebody that she's healing if you can get a good shot at it to do the damage to Mercy herself very quickly. Um, the nice thing about Symmetra's attacks in general is that they don't really give a lot of notification that you're doing them, so you can kill somebody before they even realize they're being attacked, especially if you get a good flank. So uh, definitely go after Mercy. Obviously her continual heal is going to make it harder for you to focus somebody down, and the boost damage that she uh, offers will make it so that you're just going to get destroyed by anybody who actually does get that. But aside from being able to fly to somebody else she doesn't have a ton of maneuverability and doesn't really put out a lot of damage herself as long as you're staying close as her gun doesn't really have that sort of widespread at close range so get close stay close and you can deal with mercy pretty well as symmetra has no heals of her own having a mercy on your own team can be incredibly powerful aside from the just natural benefits your extra little bit of hp boost to her will give her quite a bit more extra survivability as she is dashing around in the battlefield as best she can. Generally a lot of good synergy with Symmetra and the other supports as she does not have the ability to heal. Having a healing support for certain lineups is very powerful. So a lot of good synergy between Symmetra and Mercy. If you actually see somebody else playing Symmetra, especially one on the other team who's probably an attacker, let me know. I would love to hear about it. And along those lines, I would recommend against using two Symmetras. I mean, I guess the idea of having near 100% teleporter uptime might be interesting, but the shields that you use don't stack. So, yeah, there's not a whole lot here. Lastly, there's Zenyatta. And, wow, this guy's Discord Orb is very dangerous. He will kill you very quickly if you are at any range. But since he has absolutely no maneuverability, if you can manage to get on top of him, he is as good as dead. In addition, the fact that he is not the greatest healer for the enemy team can make your turrets a little bit more effective, as well as your area control denial sort of things a lot more effective as well, since he can't just heal everybody. The more dangerous you are, the less effective Zenyatta is going to be in trying to top up his team. So if you see an enemy Zenyatta as their primary healer, I would recommend being a little bit more aggressive. Not necessarily super chaotic and reckless, but a little bit more aggressive. 
So like Symmetra, Zenyatta, I mean, he does heal, and it's a decent amount, but it's not necessarily enough to really keep everybody topped off. So if you can pair Zenyatta with a few other heroes that are a little bit more self-reliant, you can have a very powerful team, as the extra health pool that you can give to him is incredibly powerful. Going from 150 to 175 health is really useful as a Zenyatta. In addition, the noodle damage that you do if a target is affected by the Discord Orb is greatly increased. So watch out for targets that have that. If you can manage to get close, you will destroy them very, very quickly. That's really all I can think of to say about Symmetra. I hope you give this hero a try, or at least give her a little bit more respect if you play against her. She's very powerful, very dangerous, and I think fully capable in some lineups of playing as the only support. I don't think you necessarily have to have a healer if you're playing with a Symmetra. If you play defensively, your team can survive, you don't have to worry so much about actually getting wiped, and your teleporter can provide all the quote-unquote healing that you need. If you disagree with me, that's cool. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to have a discussion about this hero. One of the most underrated and one of the most interesting, unique, and fun heroes I've played in a long time in really any game. So let me know what you think. I will talk to you in the comments, and I will see you later. Yeah, get dunked.